um, the concept of arpeggios in this. Easy chord progression, uh, two times through in C, two times in F minor, uh, two times in G, two times in C. Uh, it's a good cycle. You can you can mix it up any way you, you want, but that's a good way to start. Um, and again, the concept is just taking that arpeggio, whatever you're playing in your left hand, you're paying attention to in your right hand in your solo. Um, so a couple of things that you're going to work on are just, first of all, playing the arpeggio up and down the piano, and then in different combinations, uh, you can skip. I like doing that. You can do little fancy things like... That's one of my favorite ones, just starting up. Sounds really sparkly and it's just... just all it is. Uh, so you start on the top note. So that's the... like you can you can do it like a straight triplet or you can do more like a, a like a trill kind of thing uh. and when you came down was it just down I'm just moving one? so you yeah if you start here G7, there's four. You know? And it sounds really cool when it's uh, uh, big spaces like that. Just, I really like the trill on a big space as opposed to, I mean, it's nice here, but here, it's just, it's, I don't know what it is. But it's just cool. I don't know. Um, so just thinking of different ways that you can play that arpeggio. Um, let's just do that a little bit. Another thing you can do is um, octaves are really octaves are really strong sound, and just do the uh, this is like a like a Cuban song like the uh, that kind of thing, but uh, um, without doing the little movie around things, uh, you can uh, play the octave and then whatever is left in the chord. So here's the root, here's the first inversion. Second inversion, right? You know, <clears throat> just something you can do. Uh, so that's strictly with the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the chords in mind. Now, uh, the surround tone, target tone groups. Um, let's start with just a chromatic approach, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, something to practice is taking the scale. You have your harmonic minor scale, C harmonic minor. Uh, so all the notes are going to come from that scale. Uh, and we're going to take the C minor arpeggio, and we're going to approach it chromat... Um, not chromatically, sorry. Uh, scalarly? From the scale. Uh, from below. So you take this arpeggio and you go first note... So, you can see I'm, 
outlining the C minor triad. But still using the notes from the C harmonic minor scale. So <laughs> then, the, uh, then the half minor you would be. And then G. Big jump because it's in the scale. So if I'm going to improvise with that, it's just like a scale, right? But uh, you don't have to do it for everything, but just you know, throw it in here and there. Approach from above. Uh, be C, right? Uh, and then F minor. And then G. Improvisation. It's uh, you're still thinking about the notes in the chord, which is really an important thing. You think about the harmony. And you're going to be emphasizing the notes uh, that are in the chord, which is going to make it sound uh, more stable. Like you uh, know what you're doing. Like that whole tension and release thing. Uh, if you're going to end your phrase, if you end it on a chord tone, it's going to be stronger. I mean, you don't always want that, you know. <laughs> you know, whatever. Whatever you're trying to do, but, um, you know. Uh, and then the surround tone, target tone groups, you can go. That's from below, from above. So it's just useful to practice that uh, in, you know, all your different chords. You know. And once you do that and you just start improvising and throwing those concepts in here and there and also just running the scale with patterns. get more interesting. If you actually went to the F scale and the G, can you do the harmonic scales on the chord changes? You actually change oh, uh, that, and that wouldn't sound right in this type of 